So WWE Fastlane last night live in Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah. How about that? I gotta say, I'm still a little torn about whether there were too few <laughs> matches on this show. I know this seems odd coming from me who will often gripe about things like AEW and the sheer number of matches that they might have on a pay-per-view. And to be very clear, they will often have too damn many, right? And especially because they tend to like to give all of their or most of their matches quite a bit of time, it is too damn many. But here in this case, the show had five matches. Five of them. Ugh. Maybe you could have used another one or two here. Maybe you didn't need it. It was just odd to only have those five matches. Although all of them got some length of time except for the uh, second match on the card. But anyways, let's talk about this show. And I'm not going to go incredibly in depth here like I might normally because, again, it was only a five match show, right? The first match was for the Undisputed Tag Team Championships. And I'm sorry, I don't care how much the WWE tries to push the Judgment Day as a big-time faction, they're not, in my estimation, in my eyes. They just feel like Mommy's mid-card crew. That's what they feel like. Tell me where I'm wrong here. Like, even Damian Priest's Money in the Bank winner, he's not feeling like future main event guy. Finn Balor's never really truly been a WWE main event guy. Dominic Mysterio certainly is over, but he's not main event over, nor do I know that he's ever going to be main event level over. Mommy's the only one that has, like, main event power here. Oh, just me. And I'm sorry. The whole Cody Rhodes shit. Like, I gotta call this out as I see it. I can't imagine looking at Cody Rhodes and thinking that he's incredibly relatable or that he's incredibly likable. And once you get past the theme song that everybody likes to sing along to, like, what is there to really gravitate to as a babyface? At least with Jey Uso, you could say all the entertaining shit he's done over the past couple of years, the association with the bloodline and what happened with him with the bloodline. He's kind of a goofy fuck. Like, I get why somebody would really like Jey Uso. What's the appeal of Cody Rhodes? That's not his daddy and half-brother are names in wrestling. Tell me, seriously. But this match, I will say, for, their, for what I've just said there, like, the match was pretty good. And you could argue the right team won. I honestly, I would have rather have seen <laughs> Cody and Jay at the press conference afterwards that they were hammered or, you know what I mean? Like, they were fucked in their mind. I'd have rather watch that for 20 minutes than this match. But hey, it is what it is. The crowd was really into it. I guess whatever. Um, the second match. You have the newfangled Hurt Business. I'm going to call them the Black Business Bureau. That's Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. And this works so much better. I'm sorry. Like Angelo Dawkins, Montez Ford with Bobby Lashley. All fucking day, yes. But you bring them here just to job them out. <laughs> like, I will say this. Unlike a Cody Rhodes... It is very easy to understand why fans would really like Rey Mysterio. This is a young lion that's been doing it for a long time and still can do it at a pretty high level. He's unique. He's different. His presentation is cool. Like, so many things about him work. Um, but should they really have... The, the Black Business Bureau, should they really have jobbed out to the LWO here? I don't know about that. Of course, the only thing that really mattered here was Carlito, and I never would have had at the start of the year multiple Carlito pay-per-view appearances in 2023 on my bingo card, but I sure as fuck will take it. I won't take that new theme song of his. That kind of sucks. But seeing Carlito, fuck yeah, this was cool. I like Again, like if you wanted to have Carlito have a spot here and get a win, did it have to come at the expense of Bobby Lashley in the street pompous? That's all I'm saying. Um, speaking of coming at the expense of... Why in the fuck does WWE always insist on squeezing and shoehorning Charlotte Flair into title matches she has no fucking business in? 
I already don't like triple threat matches in general. But they only get made that much worse when this botchy bitch gets forced into them. Michael Cole, oh, she's going to show everybody how moonsaults done. The fuck are you talking about? She's not going to show all anything's done except being a boring botchy bitch. And again, like even the Cody Rhodes, I would say, hey, you know, this is a guy that dresses well. This is a guy that can go in the ring. This is a guy that can tell a story on the microphone. I'm no Cody fan, never will be again, right? But at least I will give that. I don't think he's main event level over by any fucking means. It's my opinion. I could be wrong here. But I'm sorry. I can't give anybody the benefit of the doubt when it comes to fucking Charlotte Flair. How the fuck do you look at Charlotte Flair and think there is anything remotely interesting or appealing about her other than, hey, it's been six months. Let's see what new face job she's fucking got. She fucking sucks. The fuck is wrong with anybody that likes this botchy bitch at this point? Like you watch this match again. Tell me what she did that was good. She sucks. Meanwhile, this match should be about Io, Sky, and Asuka, two actually talented performers, but we just had to shoe her in the botchy, ugly bitch in. Io, Sky wins. Whoopee. Hey, at least they worked in Bailey, like actually helping her there, whatever, telling a bit of a story. Why couldn't this just been Io, Sky versus Asuka? This match got way too goddamn much time, and Charlotte Flair continues to get way too many goddamn title opportunities. Next. It was Indianapolis, so not a surprise that Pat McAfee was going to be there. Busy day for him, certainly. And it's just striking when you see Pat McAfee in the ring and on the microphone. How he has so much more star power than 99% of the frickin' roster. Probably more like 99.8 or 99.9% of the roster. Just incredible. Um... You know, yeah, I was sitting there as he was talking about it, and he was introducing John Cena. I'm almost like he should be the personal uh, ring announcer for John Cena, but whatever. Uh, John Cena and L.A. Knight teaming together to take on the bloodline. And here's what I'm going to say. Back to the whole Cody Rhodes shit. Here's the distinction to me at this particular moment between Cody Rhodes and L.A. Knight. If these two were the final two in the Royal Rumble in January... If Cody Rhodes eliminates L.A. Knight, there will be some fans that will be pissed and will boo that. If L.A. Knight eliminates Cody Rhodes, everybody is going to cheer that, at least in the moment. And to me, that's the difference. That's why L.A. Knight should be the guy, not Cody Rhodes. But anyway, this match, John Cena, L.A. Knight... Unlike Cody Rhodes, who just had to get the pinfall victory, even if had to make sure he worked in his fucking crossroads after they hit the double team maneuver. At least John Cena's like, yeah, I'm going to cheer on LA Knight. Let him get the shine because it doesn't matter because it's all about waiting until we get to fucking Randy Orton WrestleMania 40. This time it counts. Damn it. We want it. Um, yeah, like, this is cool. You, you knew John Cena and LA Knight were going to go over here. There's no way the bloodline was going to win in this one. And I love the intimation with Paul Heyman being on the phone talking to Roman Reigns during the match because your champion for well over a thousand days can't be bothered to watch the fucking premium live event. That is fantastic. I love it. Oh, man. Uh, finally, main event. Last man standing for the World Heavyweight Championship. Shinsuke and Seth freaking Rollins. And yeah, you know, what was really dumb to this was before the match where mommy's telling Damian Priest, no, you're not going to cash in tonight. Give that to me. That was weird. Why would you take away that element? I, I don't know. Whatever. Not a deal breaker. Big deal. Just was weird and kind of stupid. Um, but this match was really good. Like if this happened in AEW, certainly Dave Meltzer would be giving it like five and a quarter stars. Like, it was really good. These guys went out there and beat the hell out of each other. Um, but Seth Rollins kind of retained, and I'm kind of like, okay, I don't care. Just like if Shinsuke won, I'd be like, okay, I don't really care. <laughs> it feels like you got two guys battling it out right now that are probably having a much better feud than I'm giving them credit for. Meanwhile, it's not really going anywhere. It just feels like it's filling time. And that's what Fastlane largely was, right? Let's be clear. You've got new tag champions, that's fine, but the rest of this just like felt like it was filling time. And okay, 
So I'm glad I don't have to pay 40 or 50 bucks for WWE premium live events, excuse me, pay-per-views anymore. You guys can tell me in the comments what you thought about this show. It was just, you know, I'd call it WWE filler lane because that's mostly what it was. Nothing memorable to really write home about.